Previously on the Omen Podcast. Dr. Robert Maria Smedley, you have been accused of witchcraft. What's so bad about being a witch, guys? It has come to the attention of the jury and the judge that this man may also be a witch. Well, that's fucked up. Gosh damn it, Martin! I'm not eating your nose garlic. Now, I almost thought that was a dream, but, Your Honor... I did that. What? That's my word. <laughs> what is, what, what do you mean? You killed my daughter. I didn't kill your daughter. Your daughter was already dead. You killed my daughter. She had been chosen by them to become one of them. Oh, Danny boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling. The chips explode. Uh, how is she? Is she okay? What's left of her is, I suppose. Joel is there, removing the stakes in the ground that are holding the banshee there. Smedley is sort of like on the floor in the banshee. Guys, help! Help me, please! What will happen next? Let's find out in this episode of Omen. I run for for Joel. Okay. Annabelle, you wanna you wanna target what Joel's trying to do as far as getting off the ground while I go for Smedley? Yeah, I'll. Yeah. Wow, words are a thing. <laughs> Don't move, and I pull out a gun. Okay. Joel looks at you, and he sort of like is holding the stake in one hand that's holding the banshee to the ground. And he puts his hand up the other side. If I let go, then the banshee is going to go flying and your friend is going to die. I don't understand how the the banshee doing the flying thing and that it's supposed to be doing is going to make him die. He doesn't know how to pilot it. Wait, is it being held down just by his body weight right now? It, it does seem that way. It does seem like he is quite strong. So, And he needs to be holding onto the balloon to keep it from going off the ground, right? Yes. And I've also been moving towards... You, the both of them, right? Yeah, and you hear Smedley in the thing. He goes, "Actually, guys, I, I I can pilot this thing. I'm just handcuffed right now." I think a better solution to go about this is to take my machete and cut off his arm, and then I'm the one holding the balloon. Well, let let, let Martin go first because Martin Martin was the. I'm just gonna tackle him. Oh shit! Okay. And like, All right. try to grab the rope at the same time, I guess. But okay. I, but that would I. Sorry, I just I'm really confused on how. It, it, He's so he's he must be holding the rope and something else because if he's just holding the rope on it on his own then he would be flying away. So he's holding the rope and in his, so it looks like he's just like pinned to the ground somehow by his feet. It's very strange. Yeah, this is why I'm very confused. How many seas thick is he? How many what? How how thick is he? How many seas oh. have thickness? No, he's he's got no thickness. No, he isn't a thick boy. He's quite a frail old man, and he is holding this thing with one hand. And he's glued to the ground somehow. <laughs> he is glued to the ground somehow, yes. Okay, well, I'm still going to tackle him. <laughs> okay, uh, as can you please roll fragility? Uh, can I argue that that's a strength? Okay, roll for strength. Not that it really makes a difference. 17! Okay, you tackle him to the ground, and he lets go of the zeppelin, and the rope begins to float off into the air. The zeppelin is moving up very slowly. Grab, 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 grab. for agility to grab it. That's a seven. Someone else has to cover me for this. I, I, I jump for it. And I get an 11. Okay, I'm going to say that you grab onto it and now you are hanging from it and the Zeppelin is beginning to float up into the air and you are hanging from this rope. Uh... Meanwhile, uh, Joel looks up at you, Martin, and you watch as his face splits open um... and it reveals a very insectoid-like face. He's a predator! He's a predator! He's a predator! And it tries to bite you. I would like to uh, hulk out and punch him in his open insect mouth, because I don't think he'll expect that. Yeah, so he's opened his mouth, and his two pedipalp-like feeders are looking to try and grab you in your neck. Roll for strength, please. Uh, do we get any sort of bonus to this? How do we? How does that work? Yeah, so I would say you get, like, plus five because of the hulk strength. Right, right, right. 
So that's a 14 total. Okay, so he looks to try and bite you on your neck, and as he's rearing back his pedipalps, you just punch him in the face. And what happens is quite disturbing. You just described this entire role-playing podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the skull and the um, spinal column of this uh, man jerk off of the body, uh, and they land on the floor. And then they coil back round, and from the skull appear six tiny legs, and it starts to scuttle towards you. Uh, I'm going to try to get a shot off on that. Please. Okay, roll for agility. Uh, That's a 24. Nice. Okay, you shoot it, and as it jumps towards Martin's face, kind of alien facehugger style, it explodes and covers his face with a nice helping of ranch dressing. (laughs) Sorry about that. Is it actually tasty, though? (laughs) Oh, no, it tastes foul. Oh, so it's not actually ranch dressing. It's It's unrefined ranch dressing. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it needs to go through, like, a bunch of different, like, filtrations before it tastes good. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. There is now Koala hanging from this rope, and the airship is, like, flying through the air now, and Smedley is, like, at the window looking down at you, looking very helpless. What do you want to do, Koala? I swing back, and I swing forth, and I swing back, and I swing forth, and I jump... And I kick through the glass. Roll fragility. 16. Okay, I'm going to say you do it. You roll through and you kick through into glass. And now you're in the sort of like central area of the Banshee now. And down on the floor is Dr. Smedley. Okay, so you can fly this thing if your cuffs are broken, right? He goes, yeah, 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 I can. Knowing you, is there a way to make my lighter finger kind of go into overdrive so I can burn... So I can melt this without having to put you into danger. You mean the the, the cuffs? Yeah, melt the cuffs. Melt the the string between the cuffs, the chain, the the the, 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 the part of the cuffs that keeps them together, so that your hands are cuffed. Um, if you uh, press the left button on the side of your finger, yeah, you've ne- have you never pressed the left button? No, I I, I just thought. Did you it, not know there was? I a- just had, I thought I had one mode, just. Little little ladder flame. I know it looks kind of like a zip, but it's actually a button. Now, if you press that, now it, it just increases the increases the damage. Okay, so I hold it to the the, the the chain between the cuffs, the thing that holds the cuffs together. It looks it's kind of like that thing that you know in that one scene in that movie where there's Keanu Reeves and there's a bunch of people jumping towards him and he starts swinging around this thing. Does anyone remember that? What's that movie? Does anyone remember the movie? You're the only person. Oh, uh, it's just you and Smedley in the ship. So, <laughs> um, I don't remember that film. Oh, uh, okay. And I just, I just hold it to the chain. <laughs> <laughs> and the chains break open, uh, and Smedley runs into the cockpit, and then he grabs a hold of the steering wheel, and the ship swings around back towards the town. Meanwhile, Doctor Martin and Annabelle, you are standing there, and a angry mob, a very, very traditional, very southern angry mob is marching through the town square up past the remains of Dorian Krusty Jackson, wouldn't it be, in the end? Never say the words Krusty Jackson again. (laughs) Dorian Krusty Jackson, and they come up, and they are now getting ready to attack you. Well, the the good news, Annabelle, is that there can't be more than 60 people here. Yep, there is roughly, I would say, at least... I would say there's about 60 people here. I'd say this is pretty much the entire town's population. Do you want to make a ghost town? (laughs) Does this include babies? How many babies are here? Uh, There is one mother holding a baby, and the baby is holding a pitchfork, like a very tiny (laughs) pitchfork for babies. (laughs) Sounds like a threat to me. The Banshee is now at a level where, Koala, you are sort of like able to jump down if you want to, and the crowd are like sort of yelling and pointing at you and they're throwing bits of food in your direction mostly pieces of garlic do you remember when you loved me oh well i guess vampires are bad for you okay you've made the wrong choice here at that moment uh you feel the ground begin to shake beneath you The pipes below you have been rupturing, and not only have they been flooding the above ground area, but that water has been trickling down and flooding into the vampire hive below. I was wondering if they could breathe underwater or not. And if you know anything about, like, pouring water on an ant nest, uh, you're about to know what's going to happen next. I just realized something. When my wife blew up, she still had my finger. She did. I'm never going to get that finger back. Yep, that's in an alligator now. Is it daytime 
by the way? Uh, I would say it's sort of like midday, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just check it. The ground shakes beneath you, and out start to crawl these vampire larvae. And the vampire larvae um, are instinctively starting to jump on members of the town and bury their fangs into them. Oh, oh. Fuck, I hope that baby with the pitchfork gets away. I don't. You watch as one of the drones grabs the baby and carries it up into the air, never to be seen again. Aw, pitchfork baby! (laughs) And the town are now sort of like dealing with not only these vampires sort of like burying themselves into their skulls and bodies, but also some of them are attacking you, and it is utter chaos right now. Uh, And a bunch of people start coming towards you, Martin, and you also, Annabelle. Um... I feel like now would be a really bad time to reference continuity. I only brought, like, 43 bullets. <laughs> you did. And I have shot well over 40 bullets. The the murder montage in the town hall didn't include you picking up other people's guns and using them? Do I look like John Wick to you? Yes. Maybe Jane Wick? I'm going to say you've got three bullets left, I guess, because you had 43, and if you fired 40, then you got three left. Well, I mean, I brought 43 to the entire town. Oh. So you fired three bullets before then, and then you fired 40 with perfect accuracy. Sounds like John Wick. Just saying. No, because I think what she probably did in the... Because she rolled quite a high roll inside the courthouse, so I think she lined people up as well. (laughs) I like to imagine she lined people up, so she would get like three or four with one shot. Get them on the ricochet. So it's like the photographer for a school picture, just like lining them up, just like, okay, you hear, you hear, bang, you hear, you hear, you hear, bang. Yeah, but like instinctually rather than like actually lining them up. (laughs) Well, I'm going to climb the rope up to the much safer looking uh, airship, thank you. Uh, Martin, you start to grab the rope and start climbing up. Annabelle, what are you going to do? Um, I'm I'm going to climb the rope. Okay, you grab the rope as well, uh, and they... I'm going to say roll for agility, please. Four. Uh, He falls backwards. Can you roll for agility again, Annabelle? I got a nine. He lands on top of you and you both go falling to the floor with a big thump. Uh, I I shout over to uh, Smedley. Did they got any weapons on this ship? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I don't don't know. Have a check downstairs. I very petitely like do my my, my hop, skip, jump downstairs. Uh, I got an observation of 18. You notice that in the back of this area, there is what looks like a mounted old style Gatling gun. Yes! Even better! Okay. I throw open the door in front of the Gatling gun. Yep. And uh, I start firing right into the crowd. (laughs) I can just see the population counter going down. Oh, God. (laughs) You start to fire this Gatling gun. Can you please roll for um, agility? Because this is a Gatling gun. I think with that many bullets... 18 agility! It doesn't matter, but I'm just nailing them left and right. (laughs) You are sending bullet after bullet into this cloud, and it's like, just like, you can hear them thumping against flesh, and people are dropping. I'm gonna need so much therapy after this. There is blood, and there is, there's ranch sauce going everywhere as these vampires and, 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 and people are just exploding from things, and Annabelle and Martin are on the floor, and... Two people grab Annabelle by the arms. Uh, Can you roll for focus, please, Annabelle? Fourteen. Okay, at that moment, you feel that same energy on you again. And you feel your back get really warm. And the two people are propelled directly in either opposite direction. And they basically, like, knock themselves out against the wall. What did I say? Glowing bad! Martin? Yes? You hear in your ears a familiar voice and they say oh my god um that that that's not good and you look forward and you see that annabelle has grown what looked like a pair of glowing bright yellow wings what i definitely rub my eyes like a few times a bunch of people um either side of her then sort of like back off in fear uh, and she is now standing there with these wings opening and closing behind her. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I, I can amplify the fear. I'm going to go full Hulk mode, but not, like, punch anyone and just pose next to Annabelle. You're going to pose? Yes, but, like, intimidatingly. Okay, you Hulk out, um, and you Hulk out so much that from your head grow these two very powerful-looking horns, and the two of you are now standing there. Hell Bankston! Hell Bankston, <laughs> yes. And Koala is just sort of standing above you guys, quite looking quite epic from the airship, and Smedley's just looking down going, what the fuck is happening 
right now. Please, someone draw f- fan art of this. Anyone, please. <laughs> is the Gatling gun, have I stopped firing the Gatling gun, or is everyone dead? Uh, I would say that you're still plowing into people. Uh, there are still vampires just pouring out of the ground, hundreds of them at the minute. Okay, then I guess I'm occupied. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> nice wings, Annabelle. Sorry, nice wings, Annabelle. I have no idea where those came from. Um, I'm very confused. Can you, can you fly? Um, I, I flap my wings. Okay, you flap your wings and immediately you gain air. You are now floating above the area around the Banshee. In fact, you're about as high as the Banshee is now. And you've got a view down below on all the people and all of the uh, carnage that's happening. This would be very convenient if I still had ammo. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Hello, everyone. It's Sean. I wanted to say hi again. I haven't been doing these for a while because Andreas is doing such a good job of them. But I'm going to do this one this week. I want to say thank you all for continuing to listen to the podcast. We were number one in Slovenia for a while. That was weird, but kind of cool. I wanted to let you all know that we've got an official Discord. So if you do Discord, then you should totally join it. There are links to that on our Twitter. We've got a bunch of different cool stuff going on in there. We've got lots of secrets going on. You can chat with the cast. It's really nice. We also have a Patreon. And now I'm going to do some one-off shout-outs for those people this month who have donated to us $5. So they're donating $5 a month. And what happens is if you, get the, if you do the $5 thing, then you get a one-off shout-out. So I'm going to say thank you to David Krebs and also Ben Bruce for donating. If you donate any money, then you get access to the episodes quicker than anyone else. As soon as I edit them, then I stick them up on the Patreon, and eventually we're going to get around to doing some Patreon-only stuff, so you're able to listen to some behind-the-scenes stuff, some questions and answers. We're currently working with the uh, DM behind Critical Bits to work on a special omen themed pokemon one shot so that'll be weird and really creepy probably as andrea said last week there might be a short hiatus soon i'm back from my games conference but there probably is going to be a week or two in the near foreseeable future where we don't have an episode come out on the normal friday that's because i'm currently waiting for some music for the upcoming finale we have also done a bunch of crossover stuff for this finale it's quite big quite epic and trust me it will be worth the wait i am busy trying to sort out the final recording session and there are seven people not including myself in it across multiple different time zones across this planet and it is surprisingly difficult so give us a bit of time we're working on it and we'll make it good which leads me to the next thing the next couple of episodes of the podcast after this one i think there's another one with the main team But after that, we're doing something a little bit different for a very short period of time. I think you'll enjoy it. I've been really looking forward to doing it for quite some time. And we're going to find out what life is like on the other side of the fence. I'm going to leave it there and I'll let you guys enjoy it when we get to it. So enjoy that. Enjoy the rest of the episode. And I will see you around on Twitter and stuff. uh, And enjoy. Goodbye. Maybe the saint in St. John was more literal than we thought. Okay. I know this is a lot to process. Um, <laughs> where are the vampires right now, I guess? So there are about, like, three big piles, like, big big mounds that these vampires are just pouring out of in front of you. One next to the town museum, there's one just behind the banshee, and there's one over by the bayou. Um, I'm gonna go try to land by the one in the banshee and see what happens. Okay, you fly over to the Banshee. Could you please roll for agility for me? 11. Okay, so as you land over by the Banshee, you do a little pirouette as you land and your wings spin around and they slice a bunch of vampires into pieces. Nice! There is wrench dressing everywhere. I'm definitely stomping on as many like larvae as I can. Okay, roll for strength. Two. 
plus five. <laughs> Two plus five. Which is still bad. I say that you, you, you're you you're stomping on a few, but the ranch dressing is causing you to slip up and fall on your back. <laughs> so gross. The ground shifts again now. It looks like everyone in the town is now dead. Congratulations, you've killed everyone. Um... <laughs> And all the houses are ours. We did it. All the houses are yours, you say. But then you notice that the ground shifts again and all the houses near the market square, the jail and the general store, the house that you lived in and the gory hole all shift and collapse. My property value. The procession followed by the vampire queen all launch themselves from the ground. They are all carrying these rather large shipments of what looks like the red liquid, and they are all flying off towards the east. The queen turns round to look at you all and goes, My loyal patriarchs, destroy those humans. Bring their bodies to me as a feast for our long journey. And then two of the larger looking vampires come towards you guys to attack you. They are brandishing these rather large kopesh knives. They charge towards you and they are flying towards you now. What are you going to do? Get out of the ranch dressing. Koala, what do you want to do? Because you have, you've been just enjoying yourself with that Gatling gun for a while. I, I have been enjoying myself. I haven't. It's very hard to see past all of the shells flying into my face. But I think Annabelle transformed into a demigod and cut a bunch of people into pieces. A demigod angel person. Yep. And also Martin got really big horns and is spent his time, I guess, like stomping like a child in puddles in the rain but on flesh uh <laughs> what is the what is the threat that we face what what can i potentially help with because everybody's dead there are two large um like the large vampire like they look like um nobility but with the great big sort of swollen abdomens full of blood are flying towards you too they've got great big like flapping wings that are flying towards you really really quickly uh, and they look very pissed and they're holding these two knives i mulch them with my gatling gun roll for agility i got a seven okay so you managed to clip one of them and the gatling gun then runs out of bullets the first one that he clipped that lands with a big thud in front of martin and the other one then lands down in front of Annabelle. Koala, what do you want to do? Who do you want to help? Oh, so it's between Martin and uh, Annabelle? Yep. Oh, shoot. Okay. So what I do, when in this cargo department that I'm currently in, ooh, okay. So we're, ca- we're above the ground, correct, in this airship? Yes. And below us are Martin and Annabelle, correct? Yes. And these big things, right? Yes. These, like, vampire knights... I put my hands underneath the back of the Gatling gun and I heave and I push forward and I drop the Gatling gun on one of their heads. Okay, Uh, roll for luck. I like that. Got a 14. Okay, you drop the heavy Gatling gun down and it crushes the abdomen of the one next to Annabelle and it yells out in pain and it tries to make a slash for Annabelle. Uh, Annabelle, could you roll for agility? 12. Okay, um, so you managed to dodge out of the way. Do you want to do anything to it? I mean, it's already dying, isn't it? So it's not dying per se. It's just sort of like pinned underneath this Gatling gun. Like it's oozing blood and like ranch sauce out the back of its abdomen. And it's sort of just like grabbing at you and it's hissing. And you can tell it's like mandibles are getting ready to like fire acid everywhere. I'm never eating chicken wings again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna somersault at it you're gonna somersault at it try to try to cut it oh i like that move that's a cool move actually can you roll for agility please Ooh. i got a 20 shit okay you jump forwards and you do a somersault and your wings cut it directly down the center oh, uh, and branch dressing sprays everywhere again you get it all over you and you watch as its carapace its face and everything like split in two perfectly down the center and it drops its blade on the floor. So there's like this big shiny golden blade on the floor now. Do you want to pick it up or do you want to leave it there? I'll, I'll pick it up, sure. Okay, so you've got this now this golden weapon. Uh, Dr. Martin, the other one has pulled itself up now. Uh, its wing is damaged, but it is barreling towards you and it smashes into you. Can you please roll for agility? Can I barrel towards it? Yeah. By all means. Can we do like a. a I, w- I want to rush at it with the, the horns that I apparently have now. Sure. Go for it. Uh, strength? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's a. 11. Total. That's six. 
Oh, yes, wait, so, yeah, plus, plus five. five. Okay. Okay, so you smash into it, but it manages to overpower you, uh, and it's pinning you down, and you can see how its mandibles are starting to reach out. Uh, um, its pedipalps, like, reach out, and they're trying to, like, slice at your neck. I don't like the sound of the word pedipalps. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's bad. Do not like it. I love that word. Its pedipalps, its pedipalps are aiming towards your neck, uh, and it reaches out and it slices at you, uh, and it cuts your skin. I want to reach into my pocket, and I'm going to grab something, and I'm going to shove it into the the mouth of this vampire. What are you going to grab and shove into? Two cloves of nose garlic. Ooh. Ooh. You grab the nose garlic from your pocket, and you shove it into its mouth, and it sort of like swallows your arm up to the um, wrist. And you watch as it starts to sort of like look a bit sheepish. It then rolls back, and you watch as it sort of like moves back and forth slightly drunkenly, and then it falls flat on the floor and lets out a sort of noxious garlic fart. <laughs> and it's dead. <laughs> On the floor. I did it! Well done. I'm not happy about any of this. <laughs> I'm mildly happy about the end result. I'm not happy about the way I got there. <laughs> <laughs> the vampire queen and her entourage are now flying off quite far into the distance, and you can see they've got those big sort of, like, caskets of red liquid on them. And you watch as, from nearby, Greg the Gargoyle <gasps> comes in, and he smashes into a couple of the crates of red liquid. The red liquid goes spraying out all over the bayou. He then reaches up and then bites a couple of the um, entourage around the queen. He tears a couple of wings off and they go flying to the floor. The vampire queen then smacks Greg. Greg goes falling to the floor in the middle of the town center. And she flies off with the rest of her entourage into the distance. I knew entourage was bad. <laughs> Do you all guys want to go check, check on Greg? Yes. Of course. Yeah, I'm running. Okay. You guys run down the road. Uh, you go past the the now mostly chewed up remains of Doreen. You find Greg in the middle of the town center. Definitely not in Hulk mode anymore. So now I'm just a shirtless old guy. <laughs> And Greg is lying there, looking a little bit grumpy and sad. He's got a slightly busted wing. Oh, but we're wing buddies. So he looks at you, and he then sort of grins, and he sort of, like, motions towards your wings, and he's like... (laughs) Wing buddies! I wish I was a wing buddy. Where did those come from, Annabelle? Um, my back. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Greg the gargoyle gets up uh, and he looks a little bit queasy. I, I want to point out he also, um, he's a little bit overweight. Yeah. Um, and wearing a tie. He is overweight and wearing a tie and he looks really queasy and immediately in front of you he throws up oh. like seven kittens. Oh, <laughs> oh great. <laughs> Live your truth, Greg. I'm not going to judge you. These kittens are all alive, but they look very manhandled and a little bit stressed out. Greg is like, okay, right? Like, he, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's just eating a lot of cats. <laughs> yes, that's a catastrophe. <laughs> Greg, I told you, you can't go around eating other people's cats. <laughs> <laughs> The four of you then move back to the Banshee and you get on and Greg manages to sort of fix his wing a little bit by sort of rubbing it on some stone nearby. The Banshee lifts off and the four of you, Dr. Smedley and the three of you and Greg, take off and you pursue in the direction of the Vampire Queen who is going off towards the east. I definitely yell, follow that Vampire Queen! It falls really flat when you say it. Come on, guys, I've always wanted to do that. Follow a vampire queen? No, but like, you know how in action movies they like get in a taxi and they're like, follow that car. It's the same thing, but with a vampire queen. Dr. Martin, I am not your chauffeur. You report to me. I'm sorry, sir. You're still wearing a toga, so that doesn't really land either. I should I should explain the va- the demon thing at some point, maybe. Yes, you will have to explain that when we get back to base, but let's deal with what was going on right now, okay? Uh, Annabelle, please put your wings away. I don't want you popping the balloon. I- I don't know how. We've got a vampire queen to fight, right? We will, yes. We need to go find out where she's going. Yeah, I don't think... I think Smedley has effectively lost his right to command. I'm not feeling... Not feeling particularly commanded right now. What What do you mean? Just more of a sense of, I saved your life while you were wearing a toga. That's not commanding at all. Wait, is this a mutiny? So what I'm going to do 
is the Vampire Queen has flapped away, correct? Yes, the, the Vampire Queen and that lot are now out of sight, but you saw them going off to the east. And Greg is a little battered up, right? Yes, but he's flying alongside you guys. Okay. I propose... I'm, make, I'm going to, to... If Greg is all right with it, I want to jump onto his back and pursue. Okay. Let's get that Vampire Queen! Okay. You call Greg across to you, and Greg then sort of like floats underneath you. You jump out of the Banshee. Can you please roll for focus for me? Can I also roll for persuasion to see if my call of let's go after that Vampire Queen lands better than Martin's? (laughs) Okay, roll for persuasion. Uh, I got a 6 in persuasion and a 16 in focus. Okay, so it falls flat. Damn it. But as you fall through the air towards... Greg, you feel something weird inside you. Uh, mm, All your blood vessels sort of tighten and stretch. I know why this is happening, and I don't like that it's happening. Dr. Martin and Annabelle, you watch as Koala falls towards Greg and then shimmers out of existence. What? Um. I check the ship if he's... I, I gotta check if, like, I I didn't hallucinate that. Like, is he still on the ship? He is not on the ship. He is gone. Greg, did you see that? Greg looks up and goes, Barum. Sorry, I don't... Uh, Annabelle, can you translate? Barum. Barum? Barum. Barum. I, I heard Barum. Barum. Yeah, that's what I heard too, but I don't think that means anything. Barum. <laughs> Koala is now gone, and the remaining group of you fly off to the east. Koala? Yes. You fall to the ground, and everything is dark all of a sudden. You look around, and you are in the town of Phantom, but none of the corpses and things from your earlier chaos are there. Instead, the ground is ashen black. Everything is wrong here. Something feels twisted. You look up into the sky, and you see darkness and swirling, and these great giant tentacles calling from above. And you hear a voice, and the voice says... How very interesting. The Omen Podcast is powered by Ellipsis RPG, the accessible donationware rule set, now available on itch.io. If you like what you're hearing, please rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. You can tweet to us at the hashtag OmenCast, that's O-M-E-N cast, and who knows, you might get a special mention in one of the episodes from us. Thank you for listening, and remember, stay vigilant. You never know what's out there. Hi there. The show you just listened to is a member of the Necropodicon Podcast Network. Head over to necropodicon.com to find tons of other shows you'll love. While you're there, check out the cast and crew profile.